Fortunately, we had some good associations in the past, and we are having a lot more associations with people like you. I'll just quickly give you a small brief about one my earlier uh, professor, wherein I had the opportunity to work with an interesting person in India, wherein we had the opportunity to go and meet students and then talk about the societal transformation need. Because being in a country like India, a developing country, uh, we run short of a lot of resources. But in reality, we have got a huge resource, which is called the mental resource, the human resource. So the development in such country is possible only by changing that mindset. So our purpose was to introduce the technology for societal transformation and also instill hope in the people's mind. Okay, so we had a series of talks there, agriculture technology for social transformation, space technology, healthcare technology, transport technology, everything. So when Sri Rajagopalachari was telling about Ramanuja's contributions and things like that, I offered to, I prefer to talk in this uh, spirituality for social transformation. Because you bring thousands of dollars of money and resources, if the person who is operating that is not having a higher goal, is not seeing the whole picture, then things are not going to be aligned and totally synchronized. So that's why I prefer this topic. And uh, with that, Prayer, Tanian uh, song, uh, you all know, it was written by Kuro Talwa, and uh, I take that Tanian as my prayer song because it says clearly that Ramanuja treated the materialistic thing in this world as nearly nothing. And he was pricing the holy feet of Sriman Narayana, and he was seeking that continuously, not just for himself, but for everyone's benefit. Okay, so in this opportunity, what I'm trying to do is trying to see the various interactions, incidents wherein Ramanuja Acharya interacted with various categories or various strata of the society, and then how those interactions and incidents resulted in a change or transformation in the life of people with whom he was interacting. 
Okay, so that's how I'm trying to make this flow. Uh, to the extent possible, I'll, I'll try to stick with English because it's the request on our side. However, uh, when I talk to my mom or when I talk to God or when I talk about God, I normally tend to go back to my mother tongue. So if I just deviate, please forgive my uh, ignorance in continuing English, okay? So, so when I said that incidents, interactions and impact, I'm trying to cover this, uh, or I'm just trying to understand in, in a way that um, how Ramanuja Charya was interacting with poor people on one side and rich people on the other side. Okay, that's one element. Then warriors and kings. He was, he was working or interacting with people who are fighting wars or literally uh, the armed force kind of people. And then the, he was also interacting with kings. Then Sishyas and Gurus. He had Sishyas and Gurus, particularly in the spiritual world. Those are the key elements in that. Then he was interacting with a lot of innocent people. At the same time, he was also interacting with a lot of wise people. How those interactions were there. Then devotees, one side. The other side, Lord himself in, in various forms and various places. And uh, followers and opposers. Obviously, when someone is trying to transform or change things, there will be a lot of people supporting, and then obviously there are a lot of people who are opposing his ideologies and then initiate, initiate initiation. And a uh, few elements about how he viewed the family life, how he supported and how he worked against or how he got relieved and things like that. And I'm trying to cover a few elements on how he was interacting with elder people and younger people. And a uh, few elements around Hindus and the non-Hindus, maybe the other, other religion people, how carefully he managed those multi-religious interactions. And towards the end, there are a few elements I'm trying to cover on regional and national. Um, it could be language or it could be customs, practices, things like that. I hope that makes a justification on my topic. Is it OK? Yeah. Very so, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now, if we get into the first um, set of combinations, poor and rich, um, Ramananda Charya, one of his great quality, quality is he was trying to treat everyone equal. Okay. And uh, in his uh, uh, Sampradaya, he gives highest importance for Guru, Shishya, and equal importance to everyone, everyone in, in the sense, everyone who are in the path of seeking divine blessings. It was his primary uh, way or primary teaching. So, the first example I'm going to talk is about the Parthikolai Rama. This is a story, or uh, this is a uh, narration about the incident that happened in his life. Ramananda Charya was living in Sri Lanka and he has already sent Ananda one for making the Nanda one in Tirumala. So, at some stage, after his Nalaya Devi Brandam classes in Tiruvarangam, he is trying to go towards Tirumala. And on the way, he is crossing different places like Tirukkodur and things like that. And uh, the next stopover for him, he has planned as Asta Sahasram. The name of the place is Asta Sahasram. And uh, there he had two friends. I think they were from Kanji from the earlier uh, stage friends. And those two people were living in this Asta Sahasram. Uh, so Ramananda Jaya sends a person, a messenger from his team, to go and tell, out of these two, there is one person called Yengesa, who is a rich landlord and he has got a lot of property, he is doing a lot of business there, he is very well to do that. <coughs> the other person name is Parthikolai Raman, so Varadachari is name, there are two names, Parthikolai Raman is his nickname, so Varadachari is his full name. Varadachari is, is, is a mean uh, <coughs> devotee and he lives on taking yasana from people and he is not having a very wealthy background or things like that. So thinking that he, Ramananda Sari along with this entire a big team of uh, his uh, followers, thinking that he should not be going and uh, making it as a burden to the Varadachari's house, he sends a message first to the Yengamurthy, Yengamurthy, Yengesan, so Yengesan is the rich person. So the messenger goes and tells the Yengesan and Yengesan is very happy to tell that, oh, today Ramananda Sari is going to come and stay in my place. So he just uh, triggers all his machinery to go and clear the house, uh, prepare the, he has got a big wedding hall and things like that, prepare everything, decorate, call people and start cooking everything. Uh, in that process what happened, the two messengers who are coming, uh, they have not had food so they were just waiting, waiting, they were not even offered water, not, not taken care and uh, they are literally dull because over 
eight hours or six hours of travel, but subsequently they are made to wait for eight hours, ten hours without even asking anything. So when Ramanujariya started arriving towards that place, <coughs> these two messengers go back and tell, okay, we have told them they are preparing. So Ramanujariya is asking them, then why you are done? What happens? Have you had your food and things like that, prasadam and things like that? Then they try to tell the truth because they can't be hiding also. And at that stage, Ramanujariya decides, okay, now this person is preparing a lot for receiving me. On the other hand, he has ignored my tea. Who is also an idea. So the person engaged in has not seen the Parmal in my idea. He is trying to see Parmal only in me, which is not there. Parmal is everywhere. So he at that stage decides, okay, now let me not go in this route, let me go to another Vallachari's place. So when he goes to Vallachari's house without any notice, obviously Vallachari is not in his house. He has gone to take Asagar and then go to temple and things like that. His wife Lakshmi is in, in that house. They are living in such a poor life wherein Lakshmi was not even having a proper dress, fully clear, uh, fully covered dress. So she just goes behind the door and then says, uh, uh, offers us namaskars and then says, uh, welcome them. So by understanding the situation, what Ramanujacharya does that he takes his uttarim out and he throws inside the house. That's what I can be seeing there. Okay, so Ramanujacharya throws his uttarim and then she receives the uttarim and then covers her body and comes out and then surrenders in front of the Holy Pita of Ramanujacharya and then starts saying that we are blessed to, uh, by, to receive you and everyone around you. So she also says that please there is a, a pond nearby so we, I request you all of you to take bath and come back and meet them and prepare beautiful prasadam and offer. Now what happened, the backdrop is in their house, poor house, there is nothing. There is no grocery, nothing to offer but still with out of love and affection at that stage she says I am offering this. In the back, background, what happened, this, this Lakshmi is so beautiful, there is a person, merchant there, and then the merchant has got an uh, uh, idea to approach her for different purposes, and she is being a, a cup cooker, she says, there is nothing doing, my husband will live in a peaceful life, even if you want to live in this way, I am okay, we don't want any materialistic because of other pressure. So, since she know that this merchant was trying to approach her for a different purpose, which is not materialistic, uh, only plus other things. She decides at that stage, okay, even if I offer my body to that merchant, if I am able to borrow some money and then come back and then give prasada for my, my acharya, it is okay. That's what she says. And she goes and tells, okay, now you give prasada, let me go and offer that to my uh, acharya, get his blessings, and then I will come back and I will surrender myself to you, you do whatever you want with me. It's so much touching and then she takes the material, comes back, they offer to uh, Brahmanujacharya. By then, what happened, the Varadachari comes back home, so he is also uh, thrilled and then he also prostrates in front of Brahmanujacharya, and so uh, they, they finish the uh, prasadam and uh, Varadachari comes back and asks his wife, now what is happening, how come you could manage all these things, what is the miracle, did you receive any major uh, support or gift from Brahmanujacharya itself, you should not have done that, we are supposed to offer it. Then she explains, Lakshmi explains what has happened. Then what happened with this Vahachari uh, uh, literally says, today I am the happiest person on the earth because <laughs> by having you with me, you, you, are, you have offered yourself itself to make prasada for our Guruji, Guruji Vahachari, uh, sorry, Ramanujacharya, which is the best thing in the world you have done because he refers to uh, the other Alvars who were going and then doing robbery also for constructing the Parvars temple and things like that. So he, he, and uh, he is also quoting something like in Prabhupada Murdam, it says, Enakala Seyapata, Pavamu Punyamatma. So that he says, and then they are happy, and they come back and then off uh, prostrates in front of uh, Ramanujari. Ramanujari understands something is happening here, so he asks, and he is able to understand. Then he offers the prasadam to them and tells them that you go and give this prasadam to that, that yes. merchant person. The merchant person on receiving the prasadam and taking, he could realize that something big I have done, a big sin I was about to commit. Somehow this prasadam has purified me, his thoughts and things like that. So he immediately understands and he calls Lakshmi as Naya. Hey, what are we going to die now? I was about to become a major sinner. You have cleared all my sins and then I just want to follow your uh, footpath. So if merchant comes with Lakshmi and Ravachari back to Ramana 
He surrendered us. Now I want to say, bless us him and say him, lead a normal peaceful life. So what happened? The merchant then started offering all his wealth, money, <coughs> a lot of resources, jewels, as his kardika, as his donation to Ramanujaraya. Ramanujaraya then tried to distribute that back to Ramanujaraya. Tell him that you have been giving a mean life, please take this money and give it. What happened? Ramanujaraya says, sorry, Ramanujaraya says, no, I don't want money. Because I have been blessed with my Guruji's blessing, which is 100 times more than anything. If I have money, then I will become lazy. Money will come on top of my mind than my bhakti and devotion. I don't want money to influence in between. So I am currently happy. We are living a peaceful life. Every day we take kasra and come and cook and then live, which is always good. So he says and beautifully denies that. Now what happened? The young son who was waiting there with all his preparation and meal for 100 people, he comes and then understands that uh, Ramanuja Charya has gone to Paracharya's place. He comes and then he falls in the field of Ramanuja Charya. Please forgive if I have done something. I don't know what I have done. So why you have not come to that? Then Ramanuja Charya explains all those things. Then young son tells that, okay, it is not, it is my over enthusiastic approach only I ignored. Unconsciously ignored, so please forgive me, my Guruji he asked. So Ramanuja Charya also blesses. And he assures that on his way back from Tirumala, he will drop into Yengesan's place. So this is story number one. I'm just telling the story to cover how Ramanuja Charya was interacting with a poor set of devotees. So the message here, he has clearly communicated whether we receive a rich relative, a rich friend, or a poor friend. Friendship, Adidi Devo Baba. Devo in the Adidi, whether they are rich or poor, is the same. Okay, so that is the message, that is the clear message he has sent inside the people. Now, that is on the poor side, we have also covered a little bit of how he managed the rich people. So I have another slide uh, which talks about the real rich. Okay, the, the other rich person who has made the Dani and what I was reciting is Kurotawa. Kurotawa is basically one of the richest persons living in the Kuran area. He was having a lot of villages, the whole villages were owned by him and his family. He was giving a lot of food and donations to people around and a lot of philanthropic activities. At some stage when he when he realized that his light is going to come through Ramana Charya, he he follows Ramana Charya, he becomes his sister. We all know that big story. I thought I'll just tell you these two extreme ends. Okay, so that is one set of things we have seen. Before I go to other sets, is it going all right? Do you think anything Fantastic. up, down, time-wise? Very nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is warriors and king. Okay, two extremes in the society and how Ramana Chari covered both them. So when I talk about warriors, um, uh, I would like to tell about a person by name Urangavilli. Mm -hmm. So I think Danur Dasa. They, they have different names in different languages. I will try to stick with Urangavili, which is the Nurdas in Q. So Urangavili uh, was following or living with or uh, married to uh, a person. Pornachi is, a, is told in some text as she was a Devadasi. She was so beautiful. So Urangavili fell in love with her and she got married. And uh, when we say beautiful, she was she was having a beautiful eyes. Okay, so she was like a nine tower, nine mid nine tower lady. So this guy who could not take his eyesight on her eyes, from her eyes. So beautiful and wherever she goes, he will just carry all the umbrella and things like that. He will follow. These two people were coming for a festival in Sri Rangam, where Ramadan Sarai was taking bath and coming back from the river. And everyone was looking at these two couple who were looking like a stain. Today in this world, we may be seeing many people doing this umbrella business. Imagine thousand years back, <laughs> if a male is carrying an umbrella behind a lady, it is viewed as a kind of not a good quality for a male to do it outside. So everyone was laughing, so including Ramanu Charya, he is just uh, sending someone to call this guy and ask him what's happening, why are you doing something strange here. Then he explains, okay, well, Guruji, he also prostrated and says, Guruji, uh, this lady is so beautiful, her eyes are excellent. I am totally drawn towards that. 
in Tamil they say oh, no, 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 no. but we are living for more than two three years I could not take my things out he is such a beautiful life the Ramana Jasera tells that okay if I show you a more beautiful eye than this one will you agree or will you say that this is only a relative thing <coughs> then Varma will say that no no uh, I don't understand how is that possible because I am a warrior, I have been going to places around, I have met so many people, I have not seen such a thing. And Ramon Jare takes the remaining story most of us know. He takes to Aranganada Paramal, Sri Ranga, and he sows there Aranganada and Pavala, Kwai, and then Kangal. Then this guy on seeing Aranganada, he could not, he could not compare that with anything else. In front of that, the, the girl's or lady's eye was nowhere near. And uh, that is where Pondal Vandale, Kovana, and Vendai Vandamayane, in Ullam Kavardane, Andal Hoon, Aniyarangan, in Amudinai Kandagangal, Matrundinai Kaunave, where how Tripana was says that he will not take his eyes or he won't see anything else after seeing Sri Ranganada and Ranganada's glorious eyes. The same way, Varangavili also gets into the same mood and he says he falls in the foot of Ramanuja. Thanks for showing me. The, the, the most beautiful eyes with, on which I can rely forever and I won't feel guilty for my life. People around me won't laugh at me. So on that day onwards, he becomes a serious follower and devotee of Ramana Sarya. What happens, the lady Ponachi, she was in love with this guy, so she also falls in food and she says, give me sannyasam for me also. So they both become sannyasis in Ramana Sarya. The best part in Ramana Sarya's principle of philosophy is, he values the family life and also the sannyasi life. So wherever people come as a family or a couple or things like that, he still receives them as a whole and they continue to have the grahastha and then still to the devotional activities. So when Ramanujacharya started this concept of bringing people as a couple also into the matta or their team or followers team, then there were other sannyasis or other brahmacharis living inside, they were making fun. They were uh, literally making, when they, when, when they were making fun, they were not coming and telling up front, but when they assembled outside, they used to promise them. They used to talk, how come our Ramahajarya can bring uh, uh, a person, a dasi, into our team, and how come an Acharya is, is not checking the qualification of all these people <coughs> uh, qualified enough to come inside our mat and things like that. So, to teach them a listen, okay, I think I have to cover a little more here. So, this is Kondal Vandanai. And uh, to teach them a listen, what happens like uh, Ramana Zarya uh, tells one, calls one sister and says, I mean, uh, what, how many people are there? And that says, maybe, I'm just putting a number, maybe about 40. When everyone is sleeping, you go and remove a small bit of portion of their dress, cut and remove a small two inch by two inch from their dress without knowing to them. This is what is the instruction he is giving. This is, this is one of the trivial idol of Ramana. So this guy, first devotee goes and cuts a little bit of dress from everyone. Next day it becomes a big kiosk. Every day, next day morning everyone comes, oh, some thief has come inside. He has stolen my thing. I can't do anything. How can we do? How such things can happen? What's happening to the security? All those sound and kiosk is there. So Ramana Jare peacefully comes and says, what's happening here? You guys have got so many dress. It's only a small piece they have taken. And the thief was so much merciful, he has left more than 95% of the dress for you. He has only taken 5%. Then these people say, no, 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 Guru, this is not correct. This is not very, this, now this dress is totally messed. I'm not able to wear because it is not having the same materialistic value. That's what they are saying. Then that night, when this Ponachi and the Varanga really were, they live in a small room inside the world. He calls the other person and tells these guys that you go and remove the jewels Ponachi is wearing and come back because we are running short of money for operating the mat. Okay, and uh, the person Sishya goes and try to remove the jewels when she is sleeping. By then, Ponachi has gone out to do, do some other duty. Only Ponachi, the Dasi, is sleeping there. So the Sishya goes and removes her own side jewels. Understanding that there is another Sishya porter in, in the mat is coming and removing these jewels. She thought, oh, okay, there is some problem for this month. That's why they are removing. So let us offer whatever we have. Or maybe if I wake up, this guy will run away. So as if I'm sleeping, I'm trying to move during sleeping. So she will 
after the person has removed one side, she will turn around and try to show the other end also. When she is about to turn, then this guy who is removing will think that, oh, she is waking up, before she catch me, let me go. So she will, he will run away. Okay, now the jewel, one section or one side of the jewel is going back to Ramanuja. Within some time, Ranga Vili comes inside and Ranga Vili is asking what's happening there. What happened? She, she tells that this is what happened. Then what happens? Ranga Vili is telling her, whatever you have done is to show that you have got some asset. And in the process of showing, you have threatened that sannyasi and you have made him panic and you are run away, which is not correct. So remove your jewels and throw it. You had an ego that you had one side and you are about to give another end. Whatever we have is everything is acharyas. We should not have kept it and we should not have disturbed that sannyasi like that. He gets into our mood. We will come back to that little later. Now, when the jewel goes, whatever they were talking, this discussion of everything is acharyas. Okay, that was listened by people standing outside and watching what's happening. Now, Ramanujaya calls the team everywhere next day and he says that, I just removed a small bit of dress from your, from your dress. You have got so many dress. See, they have got only the last pair of jewels they have on them. And that also they were thinking everything is Acharyas. So that is where your Bhakti and their Bhakti starts. So this is the comparison he gives. Now, how do we relate that to our social transformation? Today, we see so many people, so many devotees claiming that they are real devotees. But if you go close, they will try to put boundary around, this is my asset, this is my money, this is my son, this is my kid, this is my car, this is my item. A true devotee tries to take the minimum thing for him and sees everything else as Paramatma's property, given to this, through me just go to someone else who is in need. Correct? In Tamil they say a word selva. Unnidam mandu tangu vandu selva mandu, unnidam mandu sendri vidu vandu selva. A thing, a resource which flows through yes, you sir. is called Selva. So at some stage, if you stop holding that materialistic thing within us, if you start leave that out, then we get really enlightened. In, in one of the past rams, we say, we, we found that Patra the Patraril Uttra the Lead. Patra the Patra Enil. Patra means the Patra are materialistic thing. When we lose that Patra, then we do Motsham, you will get Motsham. If you keep on making a bond again and again on all this material screen, you are going to attain more. So that's the message we see here. So now on the variants we have seen. Now on the other side, I'm going to cover on, I don't know how I'm running on time. Don't I don't know how I'm boring also. No, no, no. Okay. So on the king side, Ramadhacharya has interacted with many kings. Like uh, his journey, first journey out of started with a confrontation or, or an issue with the Chola king, we all know that. I will just park the confrontation for time being and then we go into the positive sides. So when Ramanand Sarya goes to the Tondanur or Melkote side, uh, it was a royal uh, kingdom and uh, the king there was, was not having a, a, a progressive or prosperous um, dynasty now. <coughs> so you have Dal and his, his palace was dull and his daughter was having an influence of evil forces. And uh, due to your, he failed in a war and he lost a portion of his hand and a body. And when he was trying to conduct the homam and things like that, the Gurujis are the leading uh, priest there. They are not coming telling that oh, he is an Angahina. Mm. In the sense that uh, a person with a wound or injury or loss of limbs in his body, he is not supposed to run this kind of puja and the priests were not supposed to go and support that it seems. By then they were having that fight. So they were ignoring the king also. So king's palace was dull, people were dull and there was poverty in the place called Tondanur and things like that. It's a drought. There was no proper water management and things like that. So when Ramanujacharya went, the Tondanur uh, Sishya tells that this is what is happening. So if he can come and then um, bless this king, then it's going to be good. And Raman Chari says that I've got so many poor people to bless. Why why I should come and meet the king first? Then the Tondanur Sishya says, okay now 
uh, we are not going to him for any materialistic things and things like that. But if you go and make things okay there, then he will do a lot of good things for the people. In that way, it is going to be much more wider coverage for us. Ramana Jari agrees that I am not going to take anything from him. However, I am going to come and then, uh, see what we can do. <coughs> when Ramana Jari's foot, uh, foot touches the palace, with all his divine forces and things like that, it is told that he was able to cure the daughter and uh, he was able to give full respect to the king and he was able to uh, take him as part of the whole community without treating, ill treating him as a person who has lost his limbs and things like that. So that makes a change in the king's mind and he says, oh, I have seen the true Acharya today, now I fall in your feet and please guide me from now. That's tell what happens. Uh, uh, in that region, it is told that Jainism uh, is the primary uh, religion that followers are mostly Jainis and they were trying to object. They were not coming and supporting the king when he was in trouble. But when king started following Ramanujacharya and his philosophy, they were trying to come and oppose and debate with Ramanujacharya and telling that how come we can change our king, how can we can make our region as Vaishnava community and things like that. Then king says, you people are ignoring. If you want, don't talk to me. If you want to talk anything, go and fight, with your, fight your fights against Ramanujacharya. So there is a debate organized. It is told that Ramanujacharya could take handle multiple questions from multiple corners and then at the end the, the Jain scholars also could agree to what Ramanujacharya told. Okay, so that's what we are seeing there on the king. This is one king I am telling. There are so many kings we all know. Okay, the Ramanujacharya went and talked to the Muslim king in the north. He came back and there was some confrontation happening with Chola king. Later Chola king also realized and he also came back. So all the things I am parking because of my time constraints, what um, uh, I have planned with Radhi Ramanujacharya is we are going to make this as a small book and in that book I will try to cover all these elements. Okay, just here I am giving a sample essay. Okay, so next is uh, I am going to talk about Guru, Shishya and the Shishya <coughs> element. So in the Guru, Shishya element, one of the leading elements I am going to cover is the Yadav Prakasha event. Yadav Prakasha was one of the first, one of the earlier stage gurus and then wherein Guru Vey Minji Sishyan. Like that Ramanacharya being a divine incarnation, he could express all his correct views which was not telling well with Yadav Prakasha. At some stage Yadav Prakasha decides, oh this guy is going too much, he is going to negatively influence my famous. So let me try to remove him from my seat. So we know all those stories. Now at some stage, having understood Ramanuja has got divine force, but not ready to accept that, Yadav Prakasa months in the negative mood. Oh, what is that? I am just cornered now. I can't go and accept a junior boy like that as a person who has got higher wisdom than me. Because I have studied so much, I have practiced my Vedas and things like that for so long. Obviously, I am the highest, he is only a small. So he is not able to accept, but he knows this guy is so much smart, so much wisdom. So what happens, uh, he is not able to focus on his um, school. And one day, Yadav Prakasa's mother, mother came and tells, her, uh, tells him that, okay, you are not doing okay. Now we all know that Ramanuja is, is an excellent uh, uh, wisdom person. So why don't you go and then take his blessings and advice. He says no. Okay. then. Then mother, I think he uh, he comes to a wire media solution. I won't go to Ramanuja, but maybe I will go and meet Trikachinambi. Trikachinambi is a senior compared to Ramanuja. So maybe he is seeing that his age group person. I am okay, I won't talk. I am not, not going to surrender, I am going to go and talk. Then it is told that Trikachinambi assures that I will talk to Ramanuja because Trikachinambi we all know that he has got the uh, Parivatam uh, duty and he can talk to Paramal. And uh, Trikachinambi brings the message from Paramal who says that Paramal wants you to go and join Ramanuja. So please go and join. So Yadav Prakasa comes to Ramanuja, still not gelling well. He wanted to show his maturity. So he keeps asking few questions. 
you are talking about Saranda, Sarnagadi, boom, boom, boom. In whatever Vedas I have read, I have not seen the Sarnagadi explained anywhere. Can you tell me where exactly you took your source reference? Because I don't want to follow a philosophy which was formed or initiated by a small person like that. That is the message he is coming here. Then Ramanujacharya takes lead and says, that, Oh, if that is your problem, no problem. I will give you a reference from Veda. That's why he calls, Okay, I lost one of my six here, Kuratalwar to come and explain. The Kuratalwar was brought, he is given the context, and uh, he was told to explain how Samnagadi is explained in Vedas. Kuratalwar explained beautifully. Okay, he takes all Veda references, and uh, where this Namas, the all those things he is explaining. At some stage, Yadha Prakasa understood, okay, these guys are not just divine, they have proper documented evidence on what they are teaching. So he falls into it. But here what we are talking is, uh, Guru Shishya link is totally reversed if the student is really excelling. Okay? Which we are seeing even today. In computer world, in so many worlds, the students go much, much higher level. Okay, so that's one element. The other element, the Sishya and Sishya's devotion here. We know about Kuratalwar and Kuratalwar uh, was trying to protect Ramanuja. In that process, he started wearing Ramanuja's dress and then goes to Chola's kingdom. He tried to protect the philosophy of Ramanuja, uphold the Vaishnava principles. <coughs> and in that process, in front of him, he, he loses his eyes. And uh, knowing that, his Ramanuja, his Sishya has lost his eyes. In that process, he tells him that, okay, you go to Varadarajana and pray for your eyes to come back. Then only I will be happy. Because you have the happiness that you have sacrificed your eyes for your Guru. But I can't live in peace because my Sisya has lost his eyes because of me. So in this process, what happened? Kuresa was trying to avoid. He's happy with that sacrifice. Ramanujya was not happy. So everyone tells that if not for you, for Ramanuja and Ramanuja and other devotees, you should go and pray to Varadaraja. Kuratal goes to Varadaraja, prays, but this time what he prays is as if, I don't want this materialistic eye, an eye which sees the materialistic world, but I want a wisdom eye which sees my Guruji, uh, Ramanuja Charya's food and also your body food. This is the prayer he makes. Varadaraja blesses and he is thoroughly convinced with the Kuratalwar's devotion and he says, I am giving you weed, which means I am giving you moksha also. So in terms of achieving moksha, Kuratalwar is a senior to Ramanuja. So when Kuratalwar comes back and tells this to Ramanuja, Ramanuja is dancing there. Oh, my sister has got a visa to moksha and because of that I am going to get a dependent visa. <laughs> okay, this is the joy. Kuru Samadangala Namaka Motsam Vedakam, Inge Sissya Samadal Samadal Nan Motsam Vedakam, right? So that is the kind of give and takes these people are having and that's really truly amazing. So here we are talking about Sissya and how a Guru became Sissya and a Sissya got elevated on top. So that's what exactly we see today also. A school teacher may live as a school teacher for a, a student produced by that become a collector, and that collector can change the whole education system. Okay, so this is the kind of turnaround we are seeing. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to focus a little more on Acharyas. Okay, so this one uh, is, a, is a senior, uh, is a rich topic, and uh, I'm just giving that as an overview here. Ramanuja Acharya was. <coughs> we all know. In, when he was in Sripa Mudur here, the local guru and also Yadav Prakash, when he went to Sri Rangam, based on Alavandar's effort and initiation request, uh, Alavandar blessed him with five gurus. We, we all know that Panja, Panja Guru. And these Panja Gurus are Vaha Purna, who was, everyone has, Alavandar has given one one topic or one one mandra to every, each of these five and then Alavanda requested these gurus to go and tell Ramanuja, teach Ramanuja at the right stage. So here what I am trying to say, the wisdom of Alavanda was so much. 
and he thought, even though the the sisyas of him, Tirupasthiyan, the period, and the Thirumal, and the all these families were rich or wise, all of them thought, I can't pass every wisdom through one guy because this is called n plus one redundancy kind of thing. If something goes wrong, single point of failure, he was trying to avoid the single point of failure, and he was passing this wisdom through multiple channels, and those channels were again supposed to come back and join back to Ramanuja. So this is based on the quantum of wisdom he has got. And uh, at the right stage, these Acharyas, these Gurujis were passing their wisdom back to Ramanuja. Ramanuja was collecting everything. And uh, that's how he formed the Sri Sambhada uh, principles. Now, Actually, this is a great lesson for us. We yeah. learn from everybody. Exactly. Nowadays, what happens is you go to any ashram or something, they say, loyalty, don't go to anybody else. Mm. Exactly. That kind yeah. of thing is nowadays, it's very prevalent. Yeah. It's not like that. You have to learn from everybody. Exactly. Great lesson. So that's, that's the important point what you are told. Ramanuja was learning from everyone, not only these five people. Uh, mm -hmm. In, in yes. my next topic, I'm going to cover the innocent and yes. wise. I'll also explain how Ramanuja learned from all the innocent yeah. people also. So, now out of these five, five Gurujis, um, there are so many stories. We can't cover everything here. I'm going to touch the main incident with Trikoshtir Nambi, which is also an important event, because I think that is where that that Ramanuja started radiating as a as a as a person beyond. He he was a he became an ego prasa, we can say. He became an ego prasa and he started communicating his message straight from that instant. So the the story goes like this. Ramanuja goes to Trikosti Nambi for learning that Astakshara Mandra and uh, due to the IP protection or the value of that treasure. Those days, it seems that it is kept as a guarded secret and it is not told openly to all Varnas Karma people. It was kept as a secret within the top of the pyramid and they just wanted to keep it because of to protecting that importance and also to reap the benefit for their close community. The Ramanuja goes there multiple times. Since all of them are told, at the appropriate stage you have to pass this wisdom, Trikoshtir Nambi is a tough boss. So he wanted to test Ramanuja Acharya's uh, uh, true devotion and things like that. So he says, oh no, it's not time, you go and come back. After many days, many trips, many years, uh, Trikoshtir Nambi believes, okay, now Ramanuja Acharya is reasonably mature, so let me transfer. Before transferring, he also tried to put a boundary around that IP. Okay, it is for your manufacturing, you are not supposed to give this IP to anyone else. <coughs> and if you give this IP, then you will be undergoing an international court action. Something like that. Okay, international court is, you will go to Naraka. Ramanuja agrees, signs all the contract, and the, the lesson goes on. Ashtachana Mandala was transferred back to Ramanuja area. He receives with all the devotion, falls, and then pays his respect to the coast in Nambi. He comes back and says, oh, what a divine. Uh, wisdom I have got today, given information, path and open up today. So at that moment he decides, okay, if I if I reap the benefit only by myself or a limited crowd around me, what is going to happen? Why this particular wisdom is not given to everyone around us? So he is told that he goes on top of the temple or he calls people to mandab inside Trikoshtiyo and uh, there he makes that Ashtachita Mandara as open to everyone. And he says it's from today onwards it's going to be an open source code. Those who want to develop any software now just plug and play this. This is going to do miracles for you. That's what he does and then everyone is pleased. And we all know that Madhra is home the more Narayana is. Okay? So that Astachra Mandaram, Khan Kandu one day, Narayana in the Mandiram. So when that Mandaram is made open to everyone, people really joy and then they, they, they start following the devotional path. Now the message goes for, back to Trikoshti Nambi, he asked, now what happened, you have signed a contract, you have got broken the contract within no time. What's happening here? He says, it's okay. If I use this mandra, and instead of I becoming a billionaire, if it, the money goes to everyone, and if everyone learns and starts earning their livelihood, or if they get the mo way to reach mocha, and in that process, if I become a loser, it is okay. 
So he falls in the, in the foot of uh, his Guruji, Tirupachita Bhai, and says, no problem, Guruji, please, even if I have to go to Naraka, I am okay, because I am happy to sacrifice myself. So that is the kind of true devotion or, or selfless compassion we have seen in, in Ramadhan Chari yesterday. Okay, and uh, if you take a leader today, on how many leaders we see such kind of thing, everyone thinks about themselves, how to build their wealth, how to build their people, how to protect for their generations. They are not seeing about how to give to everybody else. So the first <coughs> change in the in the Sampradaya started from there where he made the first mandra open to public. Okay, so ne next one is we are trying to cover about how Ramanu Charya interacted with innocent and wise. And uh, in the innocent category, there are quite a few uh, examples which are like uh, the one is Thirukkuru Sirvillai and Thirukkodu Penvillai. Okay, there are two things I am going to touch one. Uh, Ramanu Charya used to visit all the Divya Desams and uh, in that process he was going from Tirkuru, I think. Okay, he is going from one Tirkuru. Uh, he is asking a girl that Tirkuru uh, Which side is Tirkuru? How far is that from here? So the girl, the small girl playing in the in the streets there, she says, uh, "Have you not read Namalwar's Tirai?" Uh, <coughs> so that is in the pasaram. It is, it, there is a sentence which is coming as Kupidu Dura. Kupudal Varudal Endre. So in the Kupudal Varudal, I think in the Pasaram, that, that girl knows the Pasaram. English. The girl knows the Pasaram, and in that says, it is in a, in a distance which if you call, they will listen. From here you will be able to call, which means it is just a kilometer away. Something like that. Because in those days people used to say, how far is that? Oh, it's a, it's a calling distance only. This is told. Just to encourage people, they should not think, oh, it's too much, I have to walk. So, Ramanu Charya, by seeing the wisdom of the girl who has learned the Pasuram, she is quoting reference from Pasuram, she thinks, oh, this place is an amazing place. Okay, so you see, Ramanu Charya praised this place. And the same way, when he comes out from another Divya Desam, there's a girl uh, coming out in the opposite side, and a, and a lady, former lady. And uh, the Ramanujan Charya's troop is going in the opposite direction. So they are requesting, can you just give way? Because Acharya is coming, we don't want uh, the woman standing in front of him, so can you move there? Then this, this lady is asking, which side to move? Because wherever I move, there is Divya Desam or there is a Paramal. So where do you guys want me to move? By listening to that, oh, I am still thinking Paramal only here, but see this lady. She is able to see Paramal everywhere. So she is much more senior than me. So Ramanuja learns from this small girl. Ramanuja learns from that lady. And he goes to another village. And there, a, a girl is, a lady is coming from Tirukkot. So Ramanuja Jaya now she has, he has learned something from the small girl. So Ramanuja Jaya started quoting from Pasuram and says, I read a Pasuram in which it says, Paramal Puhumur Tirukkolohe. Which means, in the Pasaram it ends like Narayana reaches the place called Tirukkodu. Now you are saying you are coming from Tirukkodu. Why you are coming from a place where Narayana is reaching is the question he is asking. The lady, she says, what is this for me? I am just coming from Tirukkodu. To stay in Tirukkodu, what is the punya I have done? By telling <coughs> that, now she quotes some, some 60 lines. Okay, 